Welcome. Here's a cute little puzzle. I'm going to ask which numbers can be written as the sum of two or more consecutive counting numbers. For example, 7 is the sum of two consecutive numbers, 3 plus 4. And 10 tends to be the sum of the first four counting numbers. And uh, I can play this game in all sorts of ways. 6 happens to be 1 plus 2 plus 3. I can do a big example like 33, which I believe is, uh, what, 10 plus 11 plus 12. So I'm really asking which numbers can be written this, this way. In fact, sometimes the answer can be more than one way. For example, 33, I believe, is also, uh, what, 16 plus 17. So, you know, there can be more than one way to do it. And we play this game for a while. For example, I might get that uh, 9 is 4 plus 5, and so on. And you start to notice things if you play this for a while, that every odd number, for example, is the sum of two consecutives. For example, 9 and 7 and 33, are each the sum of two consecutive hand numbers. And you can see that's kind of true. What's half of 9? What's 4 and a half? So I did 4 and a half down a little bit gives me 4. 4 and a half a little bit gives me 5. That must balance to be 9. So, you know, the half of 7 is 3 and a half, and the two counting numbers around it will always work. 30, half of 33 is 32 and a, 16 and a half, and voila. So every odd number can be written at least this way. So you do this for a while, you concentrate on the evens, and then you'll suddenly come across a number like 8. And you play with it for a while, and it seems it can't be done. So there's something meaty, something worthwhile here to ask. Which numbers can indeed be written as the sum of two or more consecutive counting numbers? So you might want to sit, play with this for a while before you listen on, because I'm about to give away the answer. Maybe draw a table, see if you can find some patterns, and then come up with a conjecture, and then see if you can prove your conjecture. So I'm going to clear my screen, and then as soon as my screen is cleared, I'm going to give away the answer. So maybe pause this video, and then come back to it anon. All right, the screen is cleared. And as I said, I'm about to give away the answer. Here it is. N is the sum of two, very bad writing, or more consecutives. I'll just write consex. Precisely, if and only if, N possesses an odd factor. Well, every number possesses a factor of 1, so I guess I really mean a, a meaningful odd factor, an odd factor greater than or equal to 3. All right, so which numbers don't have an odd factor? Well, something like 8, the one I was looking at, is just 2 times 2 times 2, only has 2 as its factors, and 8 won't work according to this result. In fact, 16 fails to have an odd factor as well, it's 2 to the 4th. In fact, basically, these, the powers of 2 are the only ones that don't have odd factors. So basically, this result is saying, n is the sum of two or more consecutive counting numbers, if only if, if n is not a power of 2. OK, let's prove it. Uh, I'm going to be uh, in this mood today. Let's go backwards. I'll start with the final result. Suppose, suppose that n is m times something, where m is an odd factor, like 3 or 5. Now, I'm a very visual person. I'm going to prove this with, with pictures of dots. Um, one can do this purely algebraically, and it's probably simpler to do it algebraically, but I, there's something I know meaningful and beautiful about arranging dots. So if m is m times something, that means n can be represented as a rectangle of dots with m rows. So I'll, I'll draw 5. I don't literally mean 5, but you know, there's certainly going to be m times something. So here's the number 15, 5 times 3. And what I'm going to do is identify the middle row. And my goal is to see if I can rearrange this picture so that it looks like the sum of consecutive numbers. Well, I can do it. What I'm going to do is take this first dot above here and just move it down to the row above the middle line. And I'll take these two dots above the middle line and move them down below the middle line in a sort of symmetrical fashion. So I've now rearranged the picture as da da dum da dum to 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 dum which is indeed a picture of a sum of consecutive numbers. 15, we've just shown, is also 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Um, and you'll find this works most every time. Now, there's one little danger with this, and I'll just give away the danger right now. Uh, let's suppose I had the number 18, which is 9 times 2. 9 is the odd factor, so I'm about to draw 9 times 2. Do, 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 do. Uh, that's 7 times 2, 8 times 2, just make sure I'm not being completely loopy, and off we go. So my goal is to arrange this picture of 18 dots, 9 times 2, as a stack of consecutive numbers. I'm going to do the same thing, I identify the middle row. There it is, I believe, 4 above, 4 below. And in a symmetrical way, I'm going to take one dot from the top, there it is, and move it down symmetrically below. I'm going to take two dots from the top, and move them down symmetrically below the line, middle line. That's great so far. Now I need to take three dots from the top. One, two, and I'm in trouble. I'm down a dot. There's a deficit dot, an anti-dot. But I'll put those three down yonder. 
And now I need to take four from the top. One, two, oops, I'm in trouble, anti-dot, anti-dot, two deficits. I'll build up two deficits in this case. But there they are, there's the four dots that I've stolen from the top with anti-dots left in their place. Okay, it looks like I've got this sort of triangular array of numbers, but I've got these deficits to repay. Well, I can do it. I can take this dot from the top and put it up here. So it goes, and I've paid that debt. Now I've got two dots here, which will be fine to repay that debt. And what I'm left with is the number 18 expressed in this sort of truncated triangular array. So 18, I can now see, is also 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Now, the amazing thing is, that you just have to check, I guess there's a little bit of work here, that this idea of stealing dots doesn't ever doesn't actually ever kick in until I'm up to the um, two rows above the middle line, which means my deficits will never steal from the bottom two rows of the, rows of the array. That is, I'm guaranteed to be left at least two rows. That is, I'm guaranteed to be able to write my number as a sum of at least two consecutives. So that's it. If n possesses, if n possesses an odd factor, this diagram, this way of moving dots shows you how to show that it is the sum of consecutives and even also which consecutives to play with. Now let's go the other way around. We have to now prove backwards, or forwards in this case, because I was in a mood, that uh, if, where's my pen? There we go. If n is the sum of two more consecutives, then we can actually show it has an odd factor. Well, let's see. Here's a picture of a number which is the sum of five consecutives. Oops. That means I've got five rows. I claim five is an odd factor of this picture. And basically you do this previous trick in reverse. Identify the middle row. There it is. And take the final little bit of the triangular array and put them back up. Put one up over yonder and put two up over yonder. That will create a rectangle which shows my number of these five consecutive numbers was actually a five by something rectangle. That is, if I had an odd number of rows, five rows, I've now shown that five is a factor of the number. So if, if a number is the sum of five consecutives, it is divisible by five, which is proved. And you can play this game for any odd number of rows. The hard part, believe it or not, comes from the even number of rows. Suppose I have a diagram that's a sum of an even number of consecutives. Da, 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 da. Now again, maybe algebra is actually easy for this, but you know, I'm just going to see how far I can push my, um, my analogy here with dots. I seem to like dots. Here is a picture that is a sum of four consecutive numbers. I want to prove that this picture here possesses an odd factor that I can rearrange this into a rectangle with an odd number an odd number for its side. Well, one thing I'm going to observe. This top row has some number of dots in it. I know it's three, but I'm not going to say three. This next number has one more dot. This next row has one more dot again. This last row has yet one more dot. So whatever the parity, if this, this first row was even or odd, this next row will have the opposite odd or even number of dots. This will have the opposite again. This will have the opposite again. So if the first row had an odd number of dots, since I'm doing an even number of rows, the final row has the opposite, an even number of dots. And if the first row had an even number of dots, then the final row, this is a change parity, an even number of times, an odd number of times will have an odd number of dots. Basically what I'm saying is that the first row and the last row, if this diagram, if they're an even number of rows, will possess a total of an odd number of dots. Well, how am I going to use that to my advantage? Well, at this time, I'm going to, again, draw a middle line, but it's not going to be middle row because it's an even number of dots. And all I'm going to do is just move these guys, these dots, up here, down yonder. So I'll put the three from the very first row on the last row. I'll put the four on the second row, on the second to last row. And that gives me a rectangle of dots. Its width is the sum of the first row plus the last row, which we just said was guaranteed to be odd. That means my number of dots was an odd by something it possesses an odd factor. That does it. Now, your challenge is, which numbers are the sum of at least three consecutive numbers? That is an even different answer that's worth exploring. So that means seven is now out, because I can write seven as three plus four, but I can't do seven any other way. So seven is now off my list. I want at least three consecutives. So there's something easy to play with. All right, thanks very much.